Evening now, we start with day three of the war in Ukraine, bringing new sanctions from the U.S. and its allies, including on Russia's president. This comes as Ukraine's military is pleading with their citizens to fight. Natalie Brand tonight with the details. As Russian troops rolled into southern Ukraine and unleashed air attacks on the country's capital Friday, the U.S. and European allies sanctioned Russian President Vladimir Putin himself, as well as his foreign minister and members of his national security team. What we are hoping the world takes away from this is the uh, unity uh, uh, through which the United States, President Biden, is working uh, with our European partners and allies. Just key. Ukraine's president warned of a full-scale attack on Kyiv. He said the country's destiny is being decided right now. Lawmakers across both sides of the aisle have called for additional defense aid for Ukraine. The Pentagon says the U.S. will continue to provide assistance as well as support to NATO, which has now activated its response force for the first time. There's a historic nature to all this. This is the first time that the alliance has employed these high readiness forces uh, in a deterrence and defense role. The United Nations Security Council voted Friday on a resolution condemning Russia's attack on Ukraine. But it was vetoed by Russia. Responsible member states do not invade their neighbors. They do not commit violence against their neighbors just because they have the ability. A senior defense official says Ukrainian forces are resisting and Russian troops are not advancing as fast as anticipated. Papa. But that's not stopping tens of thousands of Ukrainians from fleeing their homeland. Natalie Brent, CBS News, Capitol Hill.